My favorite disease is arthritis. I love arthritis. Now, the reason why I love arthritis is it's easy to fix. And when you can fix something as horrible and as debilitating, as painful and as expensive and as miserable as arthritis, you get kind of excited about this concept of preventing and curing diseases with nutrition. And uh, so I tell people about this arthritis thing all the time. So let's have a quick look at arthritis. Uh, number one, 75 to 80 percent of all Americans over the age of 50 get arthritis to one degree or of one type or another. And according to the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, 35 to 50 million baby boomers are going to get arthritis in the next seven to ten years, and there's not a single medical treatment designed to prevent or fix it. Aspirin certainly doesn't fix arthritis, causes gastric bleeding and death. Tylenol doesn't fix arthritis, causes 50,000 cases of kidney failure each year, 5,000 which are so severe you need a kidney transplant. Then there is ibuprofen, Advil, and Aleve. These things don't fix arthritis, and they cause liver disease in two to five percent of the users, including liver cirrhosis, even if you don't drink. And then there's methotrexate and gold shots. These things don't fix arthritis. They subdue your bone marrow so you can't make normal platelets and white blood cells. And then you have the granddaddies of all the medical treatments for arthritis, prednisone and cortisone. They don't fix arthritis. They subdue your immune system, which leaves you open to diseases far, far more horrible than arthritis. And prednisone and cortisone accelerate the loss of minerals from your bones, something you don't want when you have osteoporosis and arthritis. Now, when these prescription medications and over-the-counter medications don't work anymore to relieve pain and inflammation, the only thing left for you medically is joint replacement surgery. And uh, I, I never like to send my patients in for the joint replacement surgery because they never work out well. In fact, many times you're worse off after the surgery than you were before the surgery. The advantage my patients have always had is that I'm a veterinarian as well as a physician. And so I always used to tell my patients, look, we have all these nutritional formulas designed to prevent and cure diseases in animals, including arthritis. And so I tried adapting nutritional arthritis formulas designed to prevent and cure arthritis in pigeons and turkeys, dogs, cats, sheep, pigs, horses, cows, lions, tigers, and bears to human use. And it was no surprise to me. It works just as well in humans as it does in animals because it was designed to prevent and cure arthritis in pigs. And I've literally seen tens of thousands of people who've had a regrowth of cartilage, ligaments, tendons, connective tissue, bone foundation, bone matrix. Doesn't matter if they're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. I've seen people 97 years old regrow cartilage and bone even if they had bone to bone arthritis. If there's blood supply to that joint and that bone, they will regrow uh, bone and cartilage. Well, of course, Harvard Medical School goes berserk when you say stuff like that. Wallach, you can't say those things. The only thing left for people when they get bone to bone arthritis is joint replacement surgery. And I'd, I'd agree with them if the only raw materials you're using is Tylenol and aspirin and prednisone and cortisone. We've learned over 50 years that you can't regrow cartilage and bone using those things. One of the basic things, of course, that the Harvard Medical School jumped onto and they said, this is so ridiculous that this couldn't work. And so they took 29 patients, arthritis patients, who had failed to respond in any way to heroic medical treatment for arthritis over 15 to 20 years. They took them off all their medication, wasn't working for them anyway, lined them up for joint replacement surgery, and they said, look, for 90 days before we do the surgery, they gave them a heaping tablespoon full of ground up chicken cartilage and their orange juice every morning for 90 days. They were sort of chuckling in their beer saying nothing's gonna happen. Well, here's what happened. In 10 days, these people, these 29 people, had complete relief of pain and inflammation, something they hadn't had in 15 to 20 years. In 30 days, they could now open up a new pickle jar that had never been opened without pain to the fingers, wrists, elbows, and shoulders. In 90 days, 28 of the 29 were clinically cured. Now, this is from Harvard Medical School in the Boston VA. That meant that they had complete return to the range of motion. All the pain and inflammation was gone in their fingers and toes and hips and knees and their neck. And uh, certainly, many of them still had knots on their fingers because it was only 90 days. And you'd think they'd call me up, uh, these professors you know, of medicine from Harvard Medical School and from the Boston VA, and say, look, Wallach, we have to apologize to you. We've been bad-mouthing you for 20 years. And why don't you come up to Boston? Let's talk about the whole thing. Here's what they said. Quote, after three months, it was clear that the drug was beneficial. Unquote. Chicken cartilage had become a drug in 90 days. <laughs> now, why would that happen? Well, because you can't patent chicken cartilage. And uh, they convinced at the U.S. Patent Office that they were using a drug to do this study. And they actually got a use patent on chicken cartilage. And you too, for 3,500 bucks a month, can get Harvard Medical School's chicken cartilage in a capsule for arthritis. Of course, cartilage has chondroitin sulfate in it, glucosamine sulfate, collagen. These are all the basic raw materials to rebuild cartilage and bone. 